little confused about that. Um, could you sure. again In go 1975, over? the Knox King Health Care Services Plan Act was enacted. It was originally it was originally supposed to deal with just HMOs, but in the 1980s, it actually was extended to EAP providers. EAP providers underneath this, under this act that operate um, within the state of California um, that offer more than three counseling sessions to any employee within a six-month period ma must maintain a state license issued by the Department of Managed Health as a specialized health plan and adhere to the um, regulations of the Knox King Act. Basically what this does is it um, it assures financial stability of the EAP. It um, makes sure the EAP um, adheres to the highest standards for quality uh, management in all aspects of its operation. It also means that it has quick and efficient processes for complaint management and satisfactory resolutions are re that are required under the Department of Managed Health Care. And agencies that run an EAP program that are not licensed by Knox King cannot do, uh, provide more than three EAP visits per six-month period, which right there kind of gets us in trouble because we have um, our employees are, are entitled to eight visits a year under our current system. So even no matter if they use all eight visits, they're going to use more than three in any six-month period. Now, you, you say they must have this uh, licensing if they provide the, hi the higher frequency of service. Correct. Otherwise, what? They're, they're in violation, they're of, violation the of the... Correct. Do you know why um, uh, uh, PRA has... Have you discussed that with them, why they don't have this I license? have not discussed that with him. When we went through this process and decided who we were moving forward, we looked at the agencies that were Knox King, um, Knox King licensed. Like I said before, we had narrowed it down to two providers based on the information that they provided to us um, that we were considering. We actually knocked out the second provider because of the fact that they were not Knox King mm -hmm. li um, licensed by the state. If, um, if they're not licensed by the state and they, they either can't provide more than three sessions per a six month period and they cannot provide, if they do that, they can't provide treatment services for those sessions. So the only thing they can do is provide assessment and referral, which means they'd have to bring someone in assess them and then refer them off to the health insurance. That's within, they, that, they, that's all they would be able to do. They wouldn't be able to provide treatment. Now what does PRA do now? Do they provide treatment? Correct. And they provide up to eight visits per year, um, which means, and they are not Knox King licensed. I have the list of all the... the okay. Um, well, did, did, have you discussed that with, since this is such a long-term provider, how many years have, has PRA been providing the, uh, the services? I believe it's about 23 years. 23 years. That's a long-term local provider. I Quite really frankly, we didn't realize that this provision was even in effect, um, that, th that this license yeah. was mandated until we went through the RFP process and started doing our research on all the different um, EAP providers. Boy, this is really a, a, a tough one for me because um, it would have been, and you, ha you didn't discuss this with the 23-year local provider, year-long local provider that that and um, tried to work out a, uh, a, a situation where he could get his license? No, during the RFP process, we just followed the process you, you that we set forth out. in the RFP. We didn't have any authority from council to go back and negotiate individual deals with any providers. Okay. Um, you yeah, know, this is, I would say that uh, th this becomes really tricky for me. I, you know, in, in, in a broader philosophical scheme, the, um, you know, I'm not happy with the way the large HMOs are driving everybody else out of business, and then once they get a monopoly, they do it by decreasing service, ultimately. Uh, that's really the, what, what happens. And, um, you know, when, when we, I, I argue, when we have really large financial stakes, this is really trivial in the, in the scope of our larger budget, but when we have major large decisions like developers, what are the city going to get out of, m you know, hundreds and half a billion dollar developments or $300 million developments, what percentage the city's going to get? And I've said, let's open it up for competitive bidding. And I've heard, oh, no, no, we can't have outside developers. 
Okay, so I was arguing the other side of this. Let's, when, it, when the stakes were really large, let's try to negotiate the best bargain for our citizens by opening up the gate and having everyone compete. And we were told, no, we have to go with the local boys because, you know, we have to be loyal and support local business. Then it really could potentially could cost the citizens huge amounts of money. This is trivial. We're, you know, helping to, the, the person's been in business for 23 years, we're helping to perpetuate the system of these mega HMOs that are, are providing, uh, cutting costs by, by providing less and less service and ultimately, uh, so I, I do, I don't like this trend, although I, but I am concerned about this licensing thing if we're really out of compliance. So I'm um, uh, uh, really conflicted on You know, on, on, that, on that particular point, I, I do want to say that, um, you know, our basis for the decision is based on a number of factors that we've talked about with, with the signet proposal. And I think, I, you know, our recommendation is based on the merits of the signet proposal. We haven't had a chance to really you know, this is fairly new information. I do not want to imply that psychological resources is, is not operating in compliance. I would want to investigate that a little bit further before. So if that's a factor in your decision, I would uh, caution on Oh, that. so we don't know their, their uh, Well, once again, well, this has got the, the, uh, the, the, the law, but, but there's always nuances to the law that I would want to make sure we understand the full picture before we would make that sort of statement, um, you know, and get too deep into that. Once again, from our perspective, our recommendation is based on the competitive bid process that we went through. We thought it was a fair process. We, we came up with the, the, the best package that we thought was for the employees, and that's what our recommendation is based on. I do not want to imply that psychological resources is, is, is operating out of noncompliance. Okay, well, I'm really, I mean, that's, that's an important distinction, and I, um, 